I'm not. I'm not gonna do it. Is this a precursor how the lives gonna go? Huh? <laughs> you gonna climb all out or you gonna be serious this time? I'm not fooling with him. Nope, I'm not. Hey man, welcome to another marriage ministry Monday. Hey y'all. It's good to see you guys. Marriage made awesome by mm. I wonder what the only Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Psalms 118 and 24 said, This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in Amen. So we'll be talking about, our topic for today is going to come out of First Peter, chapter 3. Very good, very good, very good reading. We read it yesterday, and the Holy Spirit asked us to use it on our lives today. Was it yesterday or was it? It was the day before yesterday. Yeah. Either way, we got to read it. It was good. Good for the soul. Good for the marriage. Amen. All the, all the principles that you need to apply to your marriage. I'm going to go ahead and say it. We didn't catch it. Oh, okay. She missed it. Principles. Oh, okay. She was on there. All the principles. <laughs> you got you to gotta, you gotta be able to laugh with your spouse. As long as you don't laugh a, at me. It's a must. Oh, got to be able to joke and laugh. to be serious. <laughs> anyway, the topic for today is 1 Peter chapter 3. Marriage Ministry Monday. God made marriage. Marriage is good. Don't let the world lie to you. Amen. Marriage, premarital counseling is awesome. Marital counseling, if necessary, is awesome. As long as it's Bible based and God led. Any other kind of counseling is a waste of time. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just trying to make sure I got my spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First Peter, we're going to pray for you. Got any, yeah. You got anything you want to talk about? You got a testimony or something? Tell us something good. You know, we got good testimony. I do? Yeah. I'm going to have one for today. I don't know, do you? I'm going to have one for today. You brought it up. You brought it up. No. Marriage is good. That's my testimony. Amen. Thank God for my God-fearing husband. That's my testimony. Yeah, enjoying, the, enjoying these last hours together with the one I love being with. No the the, the other one I'd rather be with. Amen. Fighting this, fighting this battle that we're fighting. Amen. Really not a battle because the battle's already won. The battle know. is already won. There's no one who I'd rather be on the front line with. The Bible says we're supposed to fight the good fight of faith. That's the only fight we got to do. Amen. I got everything else sewn up. If you ain't serving the one and only true living God, you got a problem. That's 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 true. Amen. So you want to get prayed in? Get ready? Mm-hmm. Amen. You want to pray? You want me to pray? Why are you giving me that look right now? <laughs> <laughs> I go ahead and pray in. I don't know what's wrong with this dude. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for your love, grace, and mercy. I thank you for this message going out the way you see fit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Decrease us and increase you at all times. We pray for all of the marriages out there in the mighty name of Jesus, um, the ones that are godly marriage and the ones that are striving to get there, Lord. Keep your hand on it. Be the third core strand in the mighty name of Jesus. Be the light unto their path in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless them to be able to get on the front line in this last hour that we're living in and to, to, to keep the good fight of faith going in you in the mighty name of Jesus, trusting in you, seeking you diligently, daily. We pray for their households, their children, their families in the mighty name of Jesus, whomever it is not too late for in, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you right now for the laborers that, that are added through, through the Holy Spirit that working within us through the message in the mighty name of Jesus. All these things we pray, amen. Amen. Right. What's up? Oh. My uh, beautiful daughter decided to join us today. She's, she's behind the scenes. But she <laughs> said she want to listen in. So she's getting prepared for God since her, her God-fearing husband. Amen. Because daddy ain't having no other way. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
Anyway, I do have a little something I want to talk about. I saw some mess on Facebook today that kind of disturbed me, which I've, I've seen it before, but it just, I don't know, I'm just seeing it again. Every time I see it, it disturbs me. But um, somebody posted a um, posted on Facebook was a picture of a dude. There was a woman proposing to a man. She was on her knee, on her knee proposing to a man. That is not the way the Bible said. Well, maybe I'm being a little over the top, but that's kind of disturbing to me. Because the Bible's Proverbs 18 and 22 says, he, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Mm -hmm. change here from the Lord. It doesn't say she finds a husband. It says he finds a wife. Mm -hmm. So God's going to send, God has your wife, your, your wife ordained for you. And it's our job to go find them, not their job to come find us. Amen. And that's a judge, that Jezebel There you go. Boom. Straight from the mouth of the baby. Jezebel and Ahab spirit running rampant in, in our society. You know, that's just how that works. But, People think it's acceptable. A lot of people are like, "What's oh, what's wrong with that? What's the problem? Why, why can't you? Why can't a woman propose?" I mean, you can do whatever you want. I'm just telling you from but from a biblical perspective, God doesn't honor it. That's not how marriage works. A man is not supposed to wait on a woman to propose to him. But if you're not man enough to get on your knee and propose to her, that's not the woman for you. And if, as a woman, if you if you have to wait, or he wants you to propose to him, that's a problem. Amen. It's not the man for you. He's not a man at all, in my opinion. Like I said, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but. That's just what it is. That's what the Bible says it is. Amen. Me personally, I'm like I said, I raised my sons better than that. They, they're going to be the head like God called them to be, or, you know. I mean, there's no option. There's no war. Basically, that's it. Well, that's the way I'm training them to be. So that's the way I, my dad trained me. And my dad didn't say, hey, you sit around and wait for a woman to take care of you or, or propose to you or whatever. Amen. I'm not saying that a woman can't, you know, make money and more money and, and you, know, help, you know, help take care of her husband or whatever. You know what I mean? People know what I mean when I say taking care of you. I mean, like, you sit at home doing nothing and she out working like a slave or whatever. And there's a lot of cases where the wife makes more than the husband, but both of them work. So that's, that doesn't apply. Just because she makes more money, that doesn't put her as the head. You know, she is playing that, you know, fulfilling that role if she's making more money and you're staying at home doing nothing. So you're watching the kids. There's no such thing as a house husband. Let's just go and put that out there. Mm -hmm. What you think? Am I being over the top? No, it's not being over the top. I mean, it's... A lot of um, of what the world teaches today, especially to the children, is that it's okay for a woman to be disrespected. It's okay for, you know, a woman to get out of work and a man stay at home. It's okay for a man to cheat or whatever the case. And marriage is just frowned upon in, in, this, in this day that we live in. I spoke to my nephew yeah. the, other, the other night. And asked him, you know, like, him and his lady friend been together for three years. I'm like, what are y'all waiting on? Hmm. Give your life to the Lord. Go ahead and get married because he that finds a wife finds a good thing, just like my husband just said. It doesn't say that he that, that stays in a relationship 10, 15, 20 years without being married is, it's not, God don't even see people together when they're not married. You know what the world came up, well, actually Satan came up with, right. the world uses it common law marriage. Uh-huh. You still just date. You, you just, God doesn't see you as anything. There's no such thing as dating in the Bible. But that's all you're doing in worldly terms. You're just still just dating. Coming out seeing. You know, that's all it is. Shacking up is what they call it. Uh -huh. There's nothing in the Bible that says, hey, let's live together first to see how it goes. That's not how they did it in the biblical days. That's not how we do it. That's not how I'm going to train my kids to do it. Amen. That's not how, you know, I was, you know, we, were, we weren't taught the way, the, the stuff that we know now, but even I, back then, knew it wasn't right. So, Amen. Amen. Me. That's true. All right. I'm let my wonderful wife read. She's an awesome reader. That's what he's saying. And we're reading First Peter chapter three: subjection in marriage. We're gonna break down what subjection means too, because a lot of people think subjection or submission those are those are like slave terms, or like you owe somebody, or you, somebody owns you, or you have to do what they. No, it's not. That's not the type of subjection or submission that the Bible is talking about. Amen. All right, so I'll be coming from the King James Version, 1 Peter chapter 3. It says, Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may, without the word, be won by the conversation of their wives. Mm. Amen. Amen. You want to break, that, break it down what that means? Because a lot of people don't understand what that's talking about. Amen. Um, so just expound on, like, say for instance, and let me make this disclaimer. All of us 
we're created and we all have free will. Mm -hmm. But if someone is in a marriage to where the husband or the wife is not walking with the Lord, say for instance, I say from a wife's point of view, if uh, if a husband is not walking with the Lord, what this is basically saying is that the husband should be able, the wife should be able to continue to carry herself in the Lord, always walking in the Spirit, always praying and fasting for her husband to the point to where what it says that they also may without the word be won by the conversations of their wives. That means if the wife, you know, continue to implement and let her husband see that she is walking with the Lord and it's not just all for show and that, you know, if you if you are continuing to use the sword and use God's word and, and pray and stay close to the Lord, there's some things are gonna happen. Like I said, people have their own free will, but God looks at what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Is your husband able to, is the conversation about the Lord or are you putting your husband down? Like or are you because there's some marriages like that where the wife might be saved and the husband is not quite there and, and God forbid but that that they, they some Wives that that it's not right, they use it as a point to try to tear their husbands down, and that's not right. Mm -hmm. Make no mistake about it. The man is supposed to be the head, according Amen. to the Bible. But there, there are some situations where you know, everything, in, in, you know, because of sin, everything's not perfect. Some houses are going to be out of order, but it's up to us to get the house in order. Like, like my wife said, if I mean, there's been situations I know where guys have gotten married and they didn't even have no relationship with the Lord at all. They wasn't saved. Period. Let's just put it, you know, put it how it is. And the woman, you know, she's been walking with the Lord for so many years or whatever and she continued to do that and being that example to him and you know encouraging him and you know trying still trying to be that submissive wife and getting him to go to church and eventually he, he ends up passing her up spiritually and end up being you know taking his rightful place as the head because when you put it in god's hand he's gonna make it right amen so you know it's just it's just a matter a lot of times it just takes patience that's one of the one of the fruits of the spirit you gotta have patience you know, even with our kids we gotta have patience because they deal with stuff they go through stuff they got attitudes all of that type of stuff but you know, we gotta have patience, just like we have to do with our spouse, with our dog, whatever. Um, that's one of the fruits of God. You know, God gives us when we truly give our life to the Lord. You know? Amen. Verse two, it says, "While they behold your chest, conversation coupled with fear, they should the husband should be able to to see and obtain the fear of the Lord through the conversation that the wife has. The wife should always be speaking about the Lord and, and always admonishing and showing that Proverbs 9 and 10 is the truth. Mm -hmm. The beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord and knowledge of the holy is understanding. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and wearing of gold or putting on of apparel. That's saying, don't let just the beauty be the outside of the wife. Let the beauty be what the Lord puts in you. Because when a, when a woman is serving the Lord, all of this, this right here, this is just the outer shell. How does your spirit man look? Amen. When your spirit man is, is letting the light of the Lord shine through, there's nothing more beautiful than that. Amen. So it's not just about the outward appearance, because that's, that's, that's not how you're going to keep a husband, your husband. Yes, I pray that he's God fearing. If he's God fearing. He's gonna love you like the church, like Christ loves the church. Mm -hmm. But don't always make it about the outside. A husband wants, uh, 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 you know, God fearing husband wants a God fearing wife. Amen. And everything that, everything that Jesus put in here, and you know, Paul wrote about about marriage, and Peter, all of the stuff they said about marriage, God, you know, Jesus related it to the church because the church, the body of Christ, is His bride. So just like he told the Pharisees, he said, y'all have an outward appearance that's clean, but on the inside, y'all are dirty, y'all are filthy, y'all are, you know, he called them children of the devil, he called them all kind of things. Uh -huh. Because they weren't, they were just, on the outside, they, they act like they were better than people. They were, you know, real religious and talked down to people that, that really, truly, you know, admitted that they had, you know, that they needed the Lord. And they were like, well, we, we're glad we don't live like that. We fast all the time and we do this and we do that. And these people over here are, you know, heathens, you know. And that's just how a lot of people think. Well, they look at you as somebody that, it's not perfect, which none of us are. You know, that's why I, I try not to come. We try not to come off, to, you know, when we're doing marriage counseling or whatever, we're just just witnessing the people. We try not to act like we're perfect because we're not. Right. Like we do stuff every day. We, we repent for stuff every day. Man. And I don't. It's not a day goes by where I don't ask the Lord to forgive me for something because I don't. You know, someday every day I make some type of mistake. Now there's a difference between making a mistake and living in 
and living a life of sin, those are two different things. Willfully getting out of sin. There you go. Amen. When you live a life of sin, you're lukewarm. And somebody the other day talked about the rapture, which that's a whole other subject, but just for the sake of this conversation, they were saying that lukewarm people are the ones that are going to be left behind, which that's a lie from the pit of hell because Luke, the Bible says lukewarm, they don't even belong to God. He said they'll speak right of his mouth. Yep. So why would he think that you're going to lay down your life for him? You know what I mean? So that's another whole other topic. But that's just like somebody, I'm sorry. No, no, you good. I was done. No, that's just like somebody saying, when I was uh, lukewarm and walking with the Lord, you wasn't walking with the right. Lord. You were walking on your own, understanding. He, walked, he wasn't walking with you either. Just, I mean, this is real. Mm -mm. We, we both come from that <laughs> lukewarm. So. Trust me, I've delivered from it, <laughs> and I can give you a beautiful right. testimony. Man, I was that dude that, you know, had my, my gun under the seat going to the club and said, Lord, just don't let me get shot or killed in the club. You know, go with me, protect me in the club. And, you know, God's not, he, he's not going to the club, sorry. That's a lot from the He ain't gonna bless no mess. Forget that. If you make it in and out, it's sheer luck. That's what the world goes for, luck. Hmm. Not, you, you wasn't, God wasn't in there with you. So that's just, you know, that's just reality. That's Bible. So that's not anything where, that's not our opinion. You can look it up for yourself. Amen. Verse 4. It says, But let it be hidden, let it be the hidden man of the heart, the spirit man, mm -hmm. in which, in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. Amen. For after this manner, in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Amen. Amen. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are. As long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Amen. So right there it's saying, let me go back, back to verse 4. Amen. Where it says that... Um, Quiet, meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, is of great price. So right there, God is saying a meek and a, a quiet spirit, that's a value to God. Like He don't like people that are boastful and bragging and all those type of things. Those are those are traits of the devil. The devil is the one that likes to boast. Yes. As, as with this abomination, you know, everybody that gets it, they got to put their little sticker up or they got to, you know, let it be known that they're taking the abomination. That's another topic possible. We'll get on that when we do our uh, <laughs> book, of Enoch. book of Enoch here after this. But yeah, this God wants God likes a humble and a meek spirit. You know, he don't want the husband to be you know, abusing his wife and all, you know, loud and obnoxious towards his wife. That's you got to supposed to supposed to deal with your wife. You know, the Bible says deal with them gently. There you go. So it don't matter what like what the situation is. I know they get under our skin a lot because they don't you know, nag. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just joking. Whatever. I'm not fooling you. No, no, seriously though. You, got, you know, it don't matter what the situation. We gonna get on each other's nerves, whatever. It's a lifelong commitment. It's not going to be perfect. It's, going to be, it's two different personalities trying to come together as one, which when you put God as the third or fourth strand, he's the one that makes you one flesh. And y'all wonder. Amen. 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 And one mind. And, and the, the, a good example is that is me, my wife and I are always on the same page with, with the Holy Spirit. Like, I, I could be thinking something and she'll say it, or I'll write, be writing something and she'll say it before I can tell her what I've been writing, or just something like that. We were talking about earlier, what was it? It wasn't, about the, it wasn't about the bell. No, what? it was during Bible study last night. We were talking about... Uh, with, oh, with the, the kids. kids. Yeah. Um, what was it? Yeah, it was it? We're reading the book of Mark, right? Chapter 4. Oh, about the seeds that are sown on, on which ground the seeds are sown <laughs> on. And then we talked about... You, you described the way I was going to describe. We were talking about the, the type of people in the world that feed each type of seed. And basically, I mean, we always, we're always on the same accord with the Holy Spirit. Because when God puts you together... You begin to have one mind. You start to think alike and act alike. And some people even say you start to look alike, which is, you know, it's fine, so I don't mind. Yep. I guess that made me pretty. <laughs> you play too much. I don't, I don't know how to look at that one. Anyway, yeah, that's, a, that's what God wants us to be humble and meek. So where were we at? Um, it also says, you know, when you do these things, you honor the weaker vessel, you honor your wife, it says your, your, blessed, your uh, prayers won't be hindered for your blessings. So you don't want either one of those to be hindered. And by mistreating your spouse, that's one way to hinder your blessings and hinder your prayers. God's not going to hear a husband's prayers if he 
beat his wife at night. I'm just going to tell you straight like dude. Uh -uh. All of that is going to fall on deaf ears. God's not even listening. So make sure we uh, are doing what the man is supposed to do. We shouldn't be hitting on women anyway, even if we, if you're not saved. I mean, that's just something that I was taught. But, I mean, everybody's not taught the same. Some people come from those backgrounds where they, that's all they saw was women getting abused. But, you know, we beat that spirit and pray for those people as well. But you gotta, at some point, you got to take the accountability for yourself and learn to pray for yourself. So we got a lot of stuff that came down through our generations, through our families, that we, we pray for God to break those curses because you know, I was always told, you can be just like your father. You can be just like, you know, no, I'm going to be just like God created me to be. I don't have to be like anybody else, good or bad. You know? Whatever I have, whatever traits I have, they came from God. I don't have to get something from my parents. You know, they were just somebody that God blessed to be, to use to, you know, for me to be here. And I, and I appreciate both my parents. I do. I don't have to be like that. Amen. What's yeah. you? You over there thinking, contemplating? Oh, no, I just turned them to the, you know, my big sword oh. to do any study sections. Knock it out. Uh, let's see. So, so just, uh, let me see. What did we stop at? Four? No, seven. Yeah, seven. We're going to read eight to go with it, though, because that's actually what we're reading. Okay. So, just to kind of recap in the study section so y'all can understand, because I, I like to uh, understand also. Going back to uh, verse one going down in the study section, it says, When a man became. When a man became a Christian, he usually would bring his whole family into the church with him. For example, the story of the conversion of Philip, the, the Philippian jailer in Acts 16, verse 29 to 34. Mm -hmm. By contrast, a woman who became a Christian usually came into the church alone. Mm -hmm. Under Roman law, the husband and the father had absolute authority over all members of his household, including his wife. Demanding her rights as a free woman in Christ could endanger her marriage if her husband disapproved. Peter reassured Christian women who were married to unbelievers that they did not need to preach to their husbands. Under the circumstances, their best approach would be one of godly behavior. They should, they should show their husbands the kind of self-giving love that Christ showed the church. By being exemplar, exemplar, exemplary wives, they would please their husbands. At the very least, the men might then allow them to continue practicing their faith. At best, their husbands will join them and become Christians too. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Um, let's see. It says, a changed life, and still going um, from verse 1 on down, it says, a changed life speaks loudly and clearly, and it is often the most effective way to influence a family member. Peter instructs Christian wives to develop inner beauty rather than being overly concerned about their outward appearance. Their husbands will be won over by their love. This does not mean that the Christian women should be dowdy or, and frumpy. It is good to take care of oneself and look one's best. But far more important is the development of the inner spirit of godliness. Live your Christian faith quietly and consistently in your home so that your family will see Christ in you. True beauty begins inside. Amen. It ain't a front. Yeah. It's the real thing. Cause, Cause when you front, the true the true person gonna slip out, and then you can't you can't fool God. You can't. <laughs> you just can't. Nope. Mm -hmm. You can fool your husband and wife for so long too. <laughs> the real you's gonna come out. So again, I know we all prep, prep and primp and you know, try to put on this facade when we try to court our wives or husbands or whatever the case. And when you get you know when you put that ring on, you, you get to see the real person. That's one of the things you got to be prepared for. Like, like, is this the person that God sent for you? You got to know that before you get into the marriage. That's why you pray for discernment and ask God to, to show you these things. Because you're not going to know just by looking with your carnal eyes. It's like what's going on in the world right now. People are going by what they see with their eyes. But God is showing you what's trying to show people what's happening in the spirit. And nobody paying attention because they don't have a relationship with them or they, you know, they have fallen away from that relationship. That's why the Bible says it's going to be a great falling away. Because there's a lot of people that, I've been serving the Lord for 75 years, but... They, their, their trust in God has gone away. That's why they say, hey, I got to go get this abomination in order to survive because I don't want to die. I'm scared to die. I'm scared to leave this world. I don't know where I'm going after I leave this world. That's the big problem right now is, is having faith in God. In your marriage, you got to have faith in God. Amen. When me and my wife have disagreements, the first thing we do is we go to God. Like, I don't go to my wife and start arguing. You know, it's like, hey, all right, I'm going to let you be. I'm going to go talk to God. She do the same thing. She'll get her Bible and come back and we'll talk about it later. It's not our, it's, there's times where we're not going to even ever come to an agreement, but we're going to say, hey, we're going to put it, and, you know, let God handle it and have the Bible say we're going to handle it, that's how we're going to do it. 
It's not gonna be who's right or wrong. Sometimes she's right, sometimes I'm right. Sometimes both of us are, you know, we need to go to Bible and find out we're both wrong. Because this is what it is. At the end of the day, it's about putting God first. Amen. So, I do have one more thing I want to talk about real quick. So I'm in this marriage marriage club group on Facebook because I like to see how the world views marriage and what they, you know, some of the stuff they throw out there. Um, <clears throat> there was a, uh, somebody posted a, a situation where a, a woman approached a man and she was asking him a question about something. Um, about, about, oh, she had, they had their kids at the park. I saw that. Sorry? Mm -hmm. and she was like, um, asking him, can their kids play together? Can they arrange a play date? He said, well, yeah, let me talk to my wife and I'll give her your number and y'all can talk about it. A lot of people are like, why he do that? He's supposed to be the man of the house, blah, blah, blah. First of all, that's the, that's a measure of respect. Anytime I deal with women, if it has to do with exchanging numbers or anything like that, I, I, I automatically point it to my wife because I don't need to I'm, I don't need to say the woman's number. First of all, it looks bad. And second of all, we don't know what their motive is. And just judging by the text, she was kind of upset or irritated that he even talked to his wife about it. So I don't know what her motive was. You see what I'm saying? Right. She's trying to make him less of a man because he said, I'll give your number to my wife and y'all can arrange it. Right. That's just like that's that's just like if if anybody if if a, a, a woman wanted to speak uh, to my husband they speak to me because that's one if a man wanted to speak to my husband okay they shouldn't be conversating with me they need to go to my husband yeah, we that's just pray. a matter of respect right. mm -hmm. unless we have a situation where we're both talking to somebody and that's yeah. different but I'm not gonna be alone I mean, even when we do our God has blessed us to do marriage. Counseling, pre counsel whatever. I'm not gonna take a woman aside by herself and talk to the woman. That's not gonna. That's not how it works. I, I'm never gonna do that. If they have a problem with that, I'm sorry, but that's just not how it works. First of all, I mean, neither one of us have to have bad intentions, but it's all about perception too. Like, what do people see? Amen. You know, what if somebody sees that? Like, you're a pastor of a church and you're taking a, a female into your office and closing the door, and y'all in there for an hour. You may not be doing nothing but praying for them. I mean, you may be doing everything that the Bible is telling you to do, but just that appearance to other people. You know, they're, People, people are people. Their minds are going to run rampant. They're going to start rumors, all kind of stuff. So to eliminate all of that, guess what? You say, Sally, you got a question? You want to you want to call? Okay, I'll give you my wife's number. We have we have a car with our numbers on. I say, look, this is my wife's number. Give her a call. Okay, drive. You don't have to call me. Now, if, you, if, you, if, I, if, you, if I happen to be there and you want to talk to me while you know, my wife's there, I'm cool with that. No problem. Amen. I'm not trying to make it, you know, make a mountain out of a molehill, but it's just a, it's a measure of respect. And when I saw that post, I was like really taken back by all the there's a lot of women saying that too. Like, why you gotta go talk to your wife? Hello. First of all, you gotta discuss everything. I'm not gonna just send my child to somebody that my wife don't know. And like, where's the where's Junior at? Oh, I just sent him off with this strange lady. Like, come on, that's the common sense. That's all. That, a lot of that stuff is just common sense. But it comes with you know, respecting your marriage too. That was which the world is not gonna teach you. No. The Bible's the only thing that teaches you. The world's like, hey, you can you don't matter the house if you cheat or whatever. You she should she's supposed to be there waiting on you whatever. No, that's a lie. You're abusing a woman or whatever the case is, she got a right to leave, a right to do whatever. Amen. You know, we don't encourage that, but yeah, I'm not going to sit there and get abused. I don't know about you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but the, I mean, it's, it, that's just out of respect, though. It, but you got to understand the way that the world views the model of marriage. They don't view it as the biblical way where the man is the head of the household. And he is basically, he's the cover, the, the he... He covers his household, especially with his wife, or however. But they respect each other, and it all goes into. I commend that 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 young man that did that, however, mm -hmm. because it all goes to the point to do you respect your husband or wife when they're not in your presence? Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Mm -hmm. Even though even on Facebook, if somebody sends a message, and I can kind of the Holy Spirit that dwells within me, I can kind of like. Eh, you know, if somebody sends a message and, and they, they want prayer, of course, I will take the message. But if somebody sends a message, hey, how you doing? Uh, I'm, I'm blessed and highly favored. Um, love, love the Lord, love you guys. I'm putting you on a prayer wall, whatever the case is. But I let my husband know. I don't conversate with people like that on Facebook. Anywhere. You know, no, on Facebook, yeah, anywhere. I don't, because I don't, you know, sometimes the motives are just not right. Yeah, not to mention, you, we are all, we're all human too. So if you get a devil in, she's going to take him out. You leave a crack that big, he's going to come in. You at work and you're you know, chopping it up with the lady at work and she's like, oh, let's go to lunch, no big deal. I'm just going to treat you to lunch, you're my coworker, whatever. Next thing you know, that becomes a habit. And next thing you know, hey, you know, I'm developing feelings or whatever the case. Something that's not supposed to happen. 
it can be avoided. Yep. So at the end of the day, this is the person you, you, you married. This is the person that God blessed you with. That's who you're supposed to respect. And your mom don't come before, you know, before your wife. Your kids don't come before your wife. Your mm-hmm. co-workers, your job, none of that. Nope. I mean, I love my mom to death. Guess what? She don't come before my wife. That's right. Period. That's just what it is. And I see people on situations where, you know, I mean, it's just me. I see weird situations where guys seem like they date their mom. It's like, just the love of my life. And you know, they going out and can't like dinners with their mom. It's just weird stuff. I, to me, that don't sound right. But I, like I said, I could be blown out of proportion, but. I don't think I, I love my mom. If she watching, I love you. But I would. We can't go on a candlelight dinner. That's just not how. That's weird to me. Yeah. I want to take my mom out to eat. Like if we go out as a family or whatever. But, you know, we sit at the candlelight, just me and you, and you know, looking into each other's eyes. And, nah. <laughs> nah. That is a little weird. That is a lot of weird. That's just saying too much like incest to me. I don't know. Mm, so it could be yeah. wrong. If you want to comment, let me know if I. If you feel like I'm wrong, let me know. I have no problem with you. Know, like, I digress. That's just, I, I'm not going to do it. It's just me. Mm, no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you bring our book up here? Uh, yeah, it's under there. Uh, I'll put something else in there when it's time to read. I'm going to read the book and you got phone stacked on the book. I can put some to my old nursing cards in there. I can read this. <laughs> so, I mean, but yeah, that that is totally like, man, disrespect your spouse, even when they're not your husband and wife, respect them when they're not in your presence because, I mean, God sees everything. And me, I take my marriage seriously. Me too. I don't play around. Don't, don't come don't come to me with that sideways stuff. Yeah. Uh-uh. Not only that, but don't be putting all your business out there. Like, y'all have a disagreement, don't go to work telling your co-worker, man. Don't put it on Facebook I'm either. Don't do that. Right oh, now. Oh. You know what I'm saying? We ain't talking, you know what I'm saying? She, we ain't sleeping together now. You know, she's mad at me. Been a week and a half. And you like telling me, People your business, even I mean, with male or female, really, but, like, mm-hmm. especially the opposite sex. You like telling them all this stuff, and guess what? They start starting to creep in their mind. Like doorway. Oh, like, I've been I've been digging Sean for a minute. You know what I'm saying? So yep. now this might be my chance. Doorway you know, open. Boom. That would have kicked the door down. Mm-hmm. That's all it takes. Yep. Don't want to give the devil any type of doorways because mm-hmm. at the, in this hour that we're living in, you guys, he's gonna throw everything in front of your face. Mm-hmm. Everything. From, I mean, to, it's going to be everything. So you got to remain vigilant and continue to keep the Lord as the third core strand in your marriage because mm-hmm. that's the only way it's going to survive. That's it. You already know that here in America, they're trying to tear up the family structure. I don't know if y'all notice all the laws that they're passing and all the things that they're trying to abolish. But since, mm-hmm. uh, since your buddy's been in office, I don't want to say his name because I don't know if I'm going to get blocked or Oh, here we go. <laughs> you don't know much. Facebook. Anymore. They, I'm fooling with you. Talking about the little demons, they unplug you. But yeah, he's uh, passing laws like you can't call, you can't even, when you have a baby in hospitals, there's some hospitals you can't even give it a gender. You can't say, this is my daughter or my son. You just gotta say, it. What, I don't even know what the term they use. What do they use? But you can't use a, you can't give a, a gender to it. It's like weird. It's like, really sad. Because you, we want to let the, the child grow up and de- decide what it wants to be. <laughs> How about this? Whatever God created, that's what it is. Like, they're, they're trying to go against God's law for a reason. Like, you understand what they're trying to open up portals of hell and all kinds. This is way deeper than people even ever want to know because they, like I said, the carnal mind can't, can't even fathom what they're trying to do right now. But like I said, we got prayer wars out there. We got God, God has warriors on every corner, so trust me, the devil ain't. He already know he's going to lose. His time is about that long. So. Yeah, that's true. Amen. Let me get you some cards now so you can read all of them. Or you got some else? Stay safe. Oh, was that the only part we were going to read? I think so. I was going to read that verse 8 to go read the rest of it. Oh, okay. Go ahead and read verse 8. And it says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion compassion one one of another. Love as brethren. Be pitiful. Be courteous. Amen. Even in marriage, you're supposed to love. The Bible says this is, Before she's my wife, she's my sister in Christ. So, you got to... You gotta deal with your marriage like it's like you dealing with Jesus because Jesus said a man supposed to love his wife like Christ loved the church, which he gave his life for. So if he gave his life for the church and he's saying you should treat your wife the same way, like how are you gonna feel if you're abusing your wife? And you gotta think about it like that too. Don't think about how you feel, think about how God gonna feel. Yes. I have got to read this part, this study section. I'm, I'm just oh, you do. Okay. Yes, I this myself. this gotta be put out here. I'm, I'm just uh for verse seven, it says 
When Peter says that women may be weaker than men, he is not implying moral or intellectual inferior, inferior, inferiority, mm -hmm. but was recognizing women's physical limitations. Women in his day, if unprotected by men, were vulnerable to attack, abuse, and financial disaster. Women's lives may be easier today, but women are still vulnerable to criminal attack and family abuse. Mm -hmm. And in spite of increased opportunities in the workplace, Many women still earn less than men, and the vast majority of nations poor are single mothers and their children. A man who honors his wife as a member of the weaker sex will protect, respect, help, and stay with her. He will not accept her to work full-time outside the home and full-time at home. He will lighten her load wherever he can. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for a husband and know how to cook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. I try every once in a while. I try. <laughs> a guy for your husband who know how to cook, he comes in handy. Mm -hmm. It's water. It's <laughs> so let me, water. let me finish this one now. He will light her low wherever he can. He will be sensitive to her needs and he will relate to her with courtesy, consideration, insight, mm -hmm. and tact. If a man is not considerate and respectful of his wife, his prayers will not be hindered what? because a living relationship with God depends on right relationship with others. Jesus said that if you have a problem with a fellow believer, you must take it, you must make it right and make it right with that person before coming to worship. That's just like me and my husband, if we have a disagreement or however, I'm not going to go and, and, and begin to praise and worship or whatever. No, we are we're going to settle it uh, in prayer. And talk, and it says uh, this principle carries over into family relationships. If men use their position to mistreat their wives, their relationship relationships with God will suffer. Amen. God, I mean, God, man, I'm just gonna put it bluntly. I'm gonna straight. You know, I'm gonna be a straight shooter right now. God is not looking at what our wives do. You're looking at what we do. Amen. The Bible says we submit. We're, we're the head of, the, of our wives, and God is the head of us. Amen. We're so looking at what we do. We're supposed to lead our, our family, our wives. Yep. And uh, if we're not doing what we're supposed to do, we can't expect them to do what they're supposed to do. Uh, you don't, you know, you, you, yeah, you can't, you can't just be abusive and do all these things that you want to do and then expect her to do what she's supposed to do. Uh, the Bible says the house has to be in order. If it's not, everything else is, is going to be out of order, right? So I mean, everything, every relationship you have outside of the house is a reflection of how your house is too. If you go to work angry and abusing people, that, more than likely that's what's happening at home. It's a reflection of what, what you know what's coming from home. Amen. I forgot which verse that was about the how it comes in and, and, and take the strong man. Um, was that in Matthew? I think so. It's talking about spoils his, his goods. I mean, it, yeah. So I mean, the enemy coming in, giving him any type of crack to get in, or however. Ah, oh, here we go. Yep. The devil is a lie. You already know what's gonna happen. Yeah. But uh, basically, what my wife is saying is the Bible. The Bible basically says, and, and, and God gave me this a long time ago right? when I was going to a church. Like the devil's going to come after the head first. Because in order to stop the body, you got to cut off the head. Right? That's why it was, it was biblical prophecy and foreshadowing when they were able to crucify Jesus. But the one thing they couldn't do, God was not going to let them cut off his head. Because it was a representation. He, Jesus is the head of the body of Christ. Amen. We're the head of our house. In order to kill the head, I mean, kill the body, the devil wants to cut off the head. So he's going to come after the husband. He's going to come after you at work. He's going to come after you at home. He's going to make you feel less than. He's going you know, to challenge you because he knows. But if you know the word, you know how to fight the devil. That's the thing. In order for you to keep your house in order, you got to maintain your position as the head. Even if you lose your job. Like, for example, a man loses his job and his wife is still working. You have you know, trouble finding work. You still still have the things you can do to lighten the load and carry, you know, carry the weight until God blesses you with another or another financial opportunity. Because there's plenty of stuff to do around the house. You can still mow the grass. You can still fix, you know, be the handyman. Do all those things that, you know, that's what I'm teaching my son right now. We changed all the doorknobs the other day. I had him helping me. You know, whenever we do stuff around the house, I have him helping me because I want him to see that, you know, my wife and my daughters, they don't do none of that stuff. I don't even want them to take out the trash because that's not how I was raised. You know what I'm saying? It's not saying that they can't. If they choose to do it, then you know, my thing is I'm, 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 I'm going to hold him accountable if it's not done because that's his job. He's, he's responsible for the animals, the dogs. My daughter, she has guinea pigs and all that, which you know, she deals with. But 
as far as the dogs. She on the guinea pig support yeah, right now. Guinea pig back support, matter of fact. Yeah. She was about eleven hundred dollars. She said, "I don't tell nobody." Amen. Guinea pig services. So yeah, basically just men just take your place as the, as the head. You know, if you if you want to know what the head is, we, we go back through some of our other lives where we talk about the importance of being the head and what, you know, what the requirements are. The Bible scriptures that point you to how to be the head. All you, all you have to do is go back to Genesis where God created man first. He created, he created woman from a man for a man. You know, he expects you to be the, you know, the, the, the protector and the provider. You know, that doesn't mean you can't cook and clean and all those things. That's, we, you know, we do those things as well. God gave us a lot of responsibility because he feels like we can help. Because we're made in his likeness and his image. And Jesus, Jesus put a lot on his shoulders and on his back. Amen. Ready to read that book? Ready? Ready when you are, Jesus. Some cards? Here's just a stack of them, a nice little stack. Yeah, I love you, man. I still. But I have my cards. Yeah, I'm almost done. Just hold your horses. Can you do me a favor? Check those ribs. I don't know if Roger can check those in. I'll make sure if they're done, it's going to come You can put the barbecue sauce on. I'd rather you do it. I don't think they dump them that fast. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. They Sorry, we're talking about dinner. No, right yeah. <laughs> I'm just getting this book. We always like to share a little God time uh, for couples. Mm -hmm. I think that. Yeah, there you go. Sure. Oh, yeah, you got it. Sure. Hey, I'm back. All right. So today is what? What's today's day? Might know the date. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, anybody know the date? It's the 17th. Yeah, it is. Alright, good. I'm glad my daughter knows. I, I'm lost. <laughs> I just know that this is the day that the Lord has made, and I rejoice and be glad in it. That's it. Alright. So, um, I know it's backwards on here, but it's a little God time for couples. You can either order this on Amazon or pick it up at Ross. That's where I bought ours. And it's been really nice to have. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a devotional. Yes, um, it is. Today's topic is love that will last. Hmm. And the verse it's going to be referencing is Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Um, do you want to turn to that? Because this is the NCV, and I don't know what version that is. I'll let my husband read it since he's such a oh, good you <laughs> I'm not fooling with him today. Ah. Ephesians chapter 4. Those are actually, the book of Ephesians is another you know, study, you know, marriage ministry study we've done as well. So, a lot of good things about marriage come out of the book of Ephesians. So, you said 2 and 3? Uh, yes, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. So, from the King James Version, it says, With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. In the bond of peace, there is o there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your call. Hey Amen. I'm glad I told you, asked you to read that in the King James. That was nothing like that. What that said. Whoa. It changed it completely. Whoa. But so it reads. It says a wedding is a beautiful event, both to experience and to observe. Hey Amen. Amen. We had such a beautiful wedding. I, I would marry my husband all over again. She's going to too. We did. We did the covenant to to God first, and then um, six months later we did the wedding. Right? Was it exactly. Six months. Six months yeah. yeah. Six months later we did the wedding. Yep. It's a ceremony. It says the bride and groom are captivated by their love for each other, and emotions run high. They exchange rings as a symbol of their lifelong vows of love and faithfulness. The rings have no beginning and no end, and at that moment, everyone is convinced that marriage will be eternal too. However, after the wedding, real life comes, and there will be challenges in living out the love they pledged. The Greek word for love in this passage is agape, which is less about emotion and more about doing things for the benefit of the other person. Amen. Amen. What does this look like? Paul tells us it is humility gentleness, patience, and forbearance, all wrapped up in a bowl of peace. This is the substance of love. Question. Is your love going to endure? 
What are you doing to make sure it does? Talk about ways you can build peace and unity in your relationship. Amen. The prayer for uh, this reading is, Lord, we ask that you would help us preserve our love with humility, gentleness, and patience. Help us to overlook each other's faults and love wholeheartedly. Just Amen. like we are to seek the Lord wholeheartedly. Amen. Amen. When you really love someone, when you really love the Lord, you don't want to half step in anything that you do. Or when you, you know, just as my husband, I, I, I love him. I care about him being happy and, and all those great things. Right, so we was at the Rangers and she sat ninety percent of the time. She he was, was nice enough to give me a lot of time space. I ain't so give it to her. She bullied me. Try out my new my sister in law no. Ruger. Save me. Three eighty Ruger. It's called Spunky. It's called Spunky. I did let him name it. Thank you. Anyway, <laughs> love is an action word, as the, as the book just said. Love is not about just talk. A lot of people just talk. That's what's wrong. Is. That's why that marriage goes south because it, as your relationship with the Lord is an action word. A lot of people say I have a relationship with the Lord, but then they totally living for the world. Come on now. And they totally following the world. Amen. And that's why I'll go get this abomination like the rest of the world. What happened to loving God and trusting God and knowing God's word? Amen. Same with your marriage. How you gonna love your wife but you don't show? Mm -hmm. like I, I saw somebody post on that in the marriage group today that uh, picnic is corny and cheap. Man, please. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's, that's a I picnic is the most things. beautiful, romantic. I don't know what you're doing, buddy, or whatever, whoever yeah. messed up your picnic experience, but. Me and my wife have been on, what, two picnics? And they've been the bottom. I wish we'd do it more. Man. You know, we, like, date night could just be a picnic in the park for us. A I get basket it. and some fruit. Pack up the tuna, pack up the crackers, yeah. pack up fruit, it's all good. of that. Some worship music on, man. You better ask somebody. I don't know what y'all doing wrong, but <laughs> the picnic is the bomb. That's one of the, I probably have the top of my list as far as, like, romantic dates. Like, but it all, it's all about your, your level of maturity, too. Like, if you're not on a mature level, like, those things are corny to you because you... You, know, you gotta spend money. Materialistic. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, money to I got. I got. Well, you gotta take me on a cruise every every six months for me to be happy. You you balling like that and knock yourself out. But you know, mm -hmm. I've been on a few cruises too. But that's not it's not the level of romance as you have an intimate you know, time in the park or a candlelight dinner on a, on a blanket. You know what I'm saying? Look, look, we got a lot of ideas for y'all. Just holler at us. You know what I'm saying? If you got you, you want to know how to keep actually, your marriage going, like y'all are dating still, and not like y'all are married and old people and bored like you want to keep your marriage exciting like we got a lot of ideas because God has blessed us to you know like our marriage is you know, we, we have fun I ain't gonna lie we, we enjoy spending time together because we don't know how much time we got left together because I see what's going on in, this, in the world right now like if you're a true believer in Christ you already know it's coming to an end soon like the devil has a short period of time to do what he has to do yep. and it's gonna, it's gonna come with some little bit of affliction and pain for us but like, you can kill the body but he can't kill the soul amen but, yeah, before that happens, I'm in Georgia spending time with the woman that my, you know, God blessed me with. And, you know, we have date night. Every other, try to have it every other week or at least once a month. Amen. Our, our, this, this weekend, we were going to you know, Sweetie Pies. It's supposed to be, yeah, Sweetie Pies at a new restaurant. Might go to, I don't know. We don't really do movies anymore but because you know, everybody's scared of COVID. So. I don't know. We might have to see what's playing at the drive-in. Yeah, drive-in. They haven't been in a it's long like cool time. Yeah. yeah. Just man, man, remember, man, keep your marriage spicy. It's up to us first to start to, 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 to keep the ball rolling. Whatever we do, they're going to follow suit. So, you know, buy your wife to buy her flowers. I know my wife likes flowers. I try to buy her flowers. Yeah. Um, she like edible arrangements like the fruit bouquets and all that stuff. I try to do that every once in a while. Yeah. My daughter was saying the picnic is, is natural. It's like it's, you know, it's, it's there. But, I mean, I know my husband mentioned it on another live that we did. The, the, the most beautiful time that we had on the cruise was when we would get up mm -hmm. early in the morning, right before, right at sunrise, or we get up to have breakfast looking out at the ocean having Bible study, or go out on the deck and have Bible study. That is the most important time that we connect together is when we're having Bible study, when the Holy Spirit is downloading. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, man, nothing can compare. I'm, I'm truly praying for everyone's marriages, man, because... God has so much in store for you guys. Just trust Him. Just trust Him. The devil's going to attack your marriage because he knows it's ordained by God, and God wants you to enjoy marriage. So, of course, the devil's going to throw every kind of obstacle he can at you to make you not enjoy your marriage. 
Amen. Yeah, but it's ugly stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's ugly. Don't hurt yourself, man. I know. The, 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 <laughs> the movie version is ugly, but the Bible says that the devil is actually beautiful. What? So you gotta be very careful. This don't be deceived. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he was. A, he comes out as an angel of light. Mm -hmm. He says he's very beautiful. He's very well spoken. He has. He's, he's you know, laced with jewelry. I.e. the, the oh, entertainment industry, Hollywood, uh, the rappers. Why do you think they always yep. gotta have gold and diamonds and all that? Because that's what they find. They're not even <laughs> rubies in their head and stuff. Think about it. That's what the devil is draped with all kind of. Do Go look in the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, yeah. It talks about how he's draped with all these different jewels in his chest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. But anyway, if anybody have any marriage you know, prayer requests or anything like that, just message me or my wife. Either way, we're going to be praying for all the marriages. All the people that Amen. I know are married, I, I already do pray and intercede for your marriage. And I see a lot of people that I see are married. I always try to encourage their marriage because I see. They're, they're still in love. And I, I love to see that. I love to see people still dating and posting pictures with their spouse and date night and all that stuff is awesome. If you, as a matter of fact, I challenge y'all this the rest of this month or well, how much time we got left in this month? Like another couple? Oh, a week? Just the last weekend? Uh, last weekend. Uh, yeah, two more weekends. Any date nights, just post, you know, post as many pictures you can, tag us. Because I want to see what you know, I want to see what y'all out there doing. Y'all might give us some ideas. Y'all can help us out too. You know, we're not perfect. God has blessed us with you know, to be over this ministry, but we still, you know, we need encouragement too. We need prayer too. So. P-R-A-Y, not the P-R-E-Y. Because the P-R-E-Y ain't going to work. <laughs> That's why I don't even bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't work. But anyway, we love y'all. We guys, y'all join us for another Marriage Ministry Live. Marriage Ministry Monday. I'll try to keep it on Monday because that's what God set in place in the first place. And you know, we had got a little off track because he had us doing some other things. But, I mean, we're back to Mondays right now. Unless he ordains something different. Amen. I love y'all. Glad y'all ever to join us. We're going to pray out. And we are going to be doing another live here shortly um, on the book of Enoch. Did you just look at your skin? Yeah. <laughs> we got a few times. We all got a few times. I had to look at my watch. <laughs> my, see, Very shortly. that's another that's another characteristic I love about my husband. Nice. He always keeps me laughing. That's because she be laughing at me. I'm laughing with me. I'm telling you, I'm saying something. She's like, ha, 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 ha. What? Like, what? What's, going on? What's so funny? I'm trying to be serious. I'm not a serious moment right now. She be cracking up. Still love her. Yeah. I love it. I love the Lord, Lord. Amen. You want to pray out? You want to pray out? I'm going to pray out, baby. Put down my sword. I kind of disappointed myself. I left my, my little sword at work, so maybe it needed to be there. Maybe God needed to be there for a reason. Maybe it's going to send out, you know, some Holy Spirit up to that place. Amen. Well, I'll take that. need to get that. delivered, so I mean, hey, maybe God had me do it for a reason. Give him the lights, because I don't put him to the service. Father God, we thank you for this uh, marriage ministry live today, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Thank you for decreasing us and increasing you. We pray that they saw the Jesus in us and not us, Father God. We saw the message that you provided, Lord, nothing that we came up with on our own. Um, we thank you for blessing the marriage that, marriages that are out there that have uh, been watching and the ones that will watch in the future. The marriages to be, Lord, bless them to not be afraid of marriage based on yes, what the world Lord. has to say. Hallelujah. Get the word and see what you have to say about Lord marriage. Jesus. And follow you wholeheartedly, Lord, and see that marriage is a good thing. Proverbs 18 to 22 says, He who finds a wife finds a great thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Yes. We all want that favor, Lord, and I thank you for it. Thank you for favor in our marriage and in our children and everything else, Lord. We pray for that same favor over everybody that's viewing that, that are in a godly marriage and the ones that even desire to be in a godly marriage, Lord. Send a ministering angel to, to show them the way, Lord. We just thank you right now for your word. And we give you all the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Love the Lord. Love you guys. We do love y'all. We'll be back in about 20 minutes doing the Book of Enoch. For, for those of y'all who never don't read it or don't know what it's about, you should you really should tune in because Amen. it's very eye-opening for people that are on the fence, especially. The new born is not going to cut it, I'm telling you. No. We don't want to see nobody not. perish. The Lord don't want to see nobody perish. No. It's a very dark place. Hell is not a party like people try to claim it's going to be. It's actually pretty, uh, well, yeah. Yeah. Love y'all. Well, Lord willing, we'll see you guys back on Monday. Lord, Lord willing. Lord willing. Always Lord willing. Yeah. We know he has a plan for our life, but we also know that whenever his time, whenever, whenever he says our time is up, that's when it's up. So. Amen. But it's just on live or whatever it is. He says time to go, it's time to go. So mm -hmm. just make sure your life is right when it's that time. And make sure you yes. enjoy every moment you have with your spouse. I'm telling you now, this is, you're living in those times now. 
know, our grandparents and great grandparents just always say we're living in the last days, but we really are living in the last hours of the last days. If you look at what's going on around you, link it up with your Bible. The devil has a short period of time and he's coming down with great wrath, as the Bible says, because he knows he has a short period of time. Amen. Love y'all. Stay prayed up, you guys. Be vigilant. In my name of Jesus. Pray together. Yes. The Bible said it. We're praying for your marriages, your households, and just in general. We all got to get our households in order. Amen. Signing out. Until we meet again. <laughs> He's so crazy.